I'm Bill Hammack. I had just interviewed uh, Teo Gray for Focus on WILL AM 580, Illinois Public uh, Media. And we just had this little add-on to discuss the iPad app. So this is Teo Gray. Hello. And Teo, maybe, maybe you could go ahead and just show us what the iPad app does for those that listen yeah. on the well, radio. You can first see all the icons. There's actually 10 different versions of the, uh, the uh, iPad app, which is uh, English, U.S. English, U.K. English, French, German, and Japanese. And then for each of those, a regular version and a demo version, which you can find in Apple stores all over. So uh, unfortunately, one of them is missing, and the U.S. English version is, is uh, 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 an experimental one that doesn't work very well. So we're going to go with the U.K. English version, uh, launch it up there. And so the first thing you see is a periodic table, which looks a lot like um, the front page of periodictable.com or like any of the periodic table posters that I sell, um, except that it's all turning. All the objects in there, if you can see closely enough, um, they're actually all rotating. Um, and if we pick one, I'll try to navigate upside down here and go to copper. So for each element, there's two screens. This is uh, the equivalent of the left page in the printed book, so it has one giant uh, picture, but again, it's rotating, unlike the paper version. And we've got uh, an assortment of interesting different pieces of, uh, of information about the elements. If we were connected to a network, which we aren't here, I'd be able to touch any of these numbers uh, or the Wolfram Alpha logo there, and it would then call up a screen that would give much more detailed information um, uh, downloaded uh, immediately from the Wolfram Alpha uh, service. Uh, and that does things like give you the current market price uh, for elements that have market prices or gives you much more detailed information um, about uh, all, all the elements. We can then go to the second page. And here you see the same text that's in the print book. Uh, every word that's in the print book is in here also. Um, and you see, in fact, a, a layout of objects that is, again, very much like the print book. Uh, but the big difference is that you can touch these things and you can spin them. You can do as many as you want. You can use several fingers at once because this is a multi-touch screen. Uh, you can get them all going. Uh, this is something you definitely can't do with the paper version because paper is frustratingly impervious to touch. Um, you can double tap one of these and that will then bring it up full screen like this. Uh, in this mode you can click the stereo button and now you actually see it in stereo, uh, if you have uh, either very flexible eyes that are able to look at two different things at the same time, or an inexpensive pair of glasses that we sell on our website, uh, you actually see this thing popping off the screen in three dimensions. And all we're doing here is showing two different frames from the rotation slightly offset, which gives the a stereo effect. So it's kind of neat being able to, to see all these things in stereo 3D. Um, so you can then just continue on through. You, for each element you get this one nice big beautiful page and then you get a bunch of stories. Um, all the element names that occur, oh, this is actually one of my favorites here, this is, a, uh, this is a penny that has been split so you can see the zinc core and the copper cladding separated out. In the print book you only see it like that so you can't see how they're held but if in this version, you can see that I took a couple of uh, incredibly thin pencil leads and glued uh, with tiny drops of super glue to hold these things together. Uh, all the element names that occur are links, so we can click on them uh, and go immediately to that element. Uh, and uh, there's various search features. You can search the text. Um, and last but not least, there's the Tom Lair Elements song built in. And then if you get sick of that, you can skip it. Very important to have the skip song button there. Um, and uh, actually, let's just quickly show you my other favorite thing that is not quite in there yet. Um, but we will go to it right here. <laughs> yes. So here we have the um, the brand new, not entirely finished yet, Japanese version of the Element Song, um, with uh, 
you'll see here the, uh, the same animation, except the names are all Japanese. Um, and left we have Lena uh, Lichtenstein, who is the, the performer of the Japanese version. And this is your first cousin once removed? First cousin once removed, yes. Okay. Is, she, is she Japanese? She's half Japanese. So my cousin, um, who is American, uh, uh, moved to Japan 20 years ago to become a lounge singer. And he performs in fancy hotels in the Osaka area. Um, and then during the day, he, he uh, has jobs writing um, music for video games and sort of performing American hits for, um, uh, for the Japanese audience. Uh, so he did the arrangement and you know reset the Gilbert and Sullivan tune to match the number of syllables. Uh, it turns out the uh, the song in Japanese is much longer than the song in English, and there's three reasons for that. One is that Tom Lehrer can sing this faster than anybody else on the planet. If you compare the just the the rate at which he's producing syllables, it's it's ama amazing. Um, second is there's way more syllables in Japanese element names than there are in English. They pronounce more of the letters separately, even when the name is the same. Um, and there's a bunch more elements that were discovered since 1959. So at the end, you'll get a whole bunch of elements that are not in the Tom Lehrer version. So it's actually about a minute longer altogether. So I don't know where we are. I think we're getting close to the end now. That was one take on her part. Um, no, that was actually lip synced. And if you oh, look carefully, that... you'll notice that the actual, I mean, it is really her singing. Right. And the, the audio portion of what you heard was pieced together out of a number okay. of takes. Um, and there were some places where we, you know, we improved the enunciation of some of the letters by audio processing, it's, sure. you know, where some elements were not quite perfect. But she basically, you know, sang the whole thing. We have something special then for our, for our uh, YouTube listeners or video listeners. So, Teo, thank you.